Hello, everyone. So I'm going to start our lecture on chapter 49. We started this on the last Tuesday that we were in class, but I know everyone wasn't there. So I'm going to start from the beginning because this is a pretty short chapter. So again, this chapter is pretty much about different systems that we can use when we have a patient that needs an interproximal restoration. Um, and remember, when we say interproximal, we mean we mean those side surfaces, so your mesial or distal surface. So if a patient has a cavity on the mesial or distal, in order for us to restore that tooth or to fix that tooth, um, we need to use one of these different matrix systems. So if you, for those of you that were here the last Tuesday we were in class, we worked with the um, universal band and the universal matrix system, which is our Tafelmeyer and the band. Um, but throughout this, this um, PowerPoint presentation, we'll also talk about a different system that we can use for anterior teeth and also what we can use for primary teeth. So we're just going to go through the different options for the matrix. So again, like it says here with the introduction, the matrix system is used to provide a temporary wall for the restoration process in class two, three, and four preparations. So again, it's very important for us to have these matrix systems because without them, we would not be able to build up these walls. So if we were to place the material without a matrix, the composite, the amalgam, whatever it is that you're using will just kind of flow out and it would not recreate the borders and the walls of the mesial and distal of the tooth for us. So we need something in place that kind of gives us a template of what that interproximal wall is supposed to look like. So first we have our universal retainer, which we also call the Toffelmeyer retainer. So again, that's the mechanical device. It's a small metal device that we use and we attach a band onto it. Um, and we have to make sure that when you are placing this band onto the patient's tooth, that you're placing the band on the buckle, right? Because if we put it where the band is seated on the lingual, then the patient won't be able, to, we won't be able to restore the tooth because it'll be in the way. And I know if you're just hearing my voice and looking at these words, it may sound a little confusing, but please go back and look at those videos that I posted of placing the top of Meyer and putting uh, the matrix band on the top of Meyer so you can have a visual of what that actually looks like and what it means when we say that the top of Meyer should be placed on the buckle. So the matrix band is what we attach to the Toffelmeyer in order to help us create that border as well. Um, and it's a thin, flexible stainless steel material. So we spoke about how we have two different types. We have the universal one, um, which is the one that's more commonly used. Uh, so it's the one that we practice. And then we have one that has an extension band. Now we would use the one with the extension band if the cavity has gone below the gum line. So if the cavity is reaching into or underneath the gingiva, then we would use the extender band because now it's gonna provide us with a border down below the gum line. And these are the examples of what those matrix bands look like. So we used uh, number one, the universal one, that's the one you guys were using on Tuesday, the one we were practicing putting together. And then two and three, our, our types with the extender. Two would be the one we use with uh, a pediatric patient. And then three would be an extender that we use with an adult patient. And again, you see those uh, two little humps in the middle of these extender bands. And those humps help the, uh, it helps the matrix band go below the gingiva and provides us with a border below where we can't see. So the design of the matrix band is in a way that we can kind of form a circle. So if you remember, the first thing we did when we tried to put the matrix band in the top of my is that we folded it in half. And then we had to look at it, right? We had to look to see when you look at the top of your circle versus the bottom of your circle, which side would be the smaller circumference and which side would be the larger circumference or which side had a larger opening, which side had a smaller opening. And remember we said the side with the smaller opening would be going towards the gingiva and the side with the larger opening or the larger circumference goes towards the occlusal. Okay, because we want it to be a little bit narrow towards the gingiva, but remember the crowns of these posterior teeth are larger. So we want to make sure we have enough space in order to fill the material. So again, the smaller circumference or the smaller side of uh, your matrix band would go towards the gingiva, the larger end goes towards the occlusal. 
So contouring, the center of the matrix then should be contoured uh, in the proximal contact area. So the final restoration will have a proper contact. So how we do this is remembering the first step was we took our football burnisher, we put our matrix band down on a piece of paper, and we just uh, use the burnisher to kind of um, contour the middle just by rubbing it against the middle of the band. Um, and that just kind of helps us to have more shape to our band so it won't be like a box. Because remember, our teeth are not shaped like straight boxes. Our teeth have curves and contours. So when we are restoring the tooth, we want to make sure that we are restoring those contours right back into the tooth. So sometimes if you do not have a burnisher on hand, you can use the end of the mirror, the end that does the end of the mouth mirror that doesn't have the mirror. So just the back end of it and rub it against the band. And that sometimes can also help you to contour your band. We also use wedges, if you remember, we place the wedges into the uh, embrasure space, which is the black triangular space on the tooth right uh, above the gingiva. And the purpose is so that our material, whichever you're using, whether it's composite or amalgam or a glass ionomer, that material will not get locked into the embrasure space because that will then cause the patient um, not being able to floss their teeth. Right. And if the patient is not able to floss, we said they can uh, develop gingivitis. They develop gingivitis and it's left untreated. Now they're going to develop periodontitis, which is attacking not only the gingiva, but it's now attacking the periodontal ligaments. And it is also attacking the bone that is supporting the teeth. So we don't ever want to restore a tooth and cause more harm than good. So in order for us to make sure that the patient's tooth is back to its original function, not only by the way that it looks, but the fact that the patient will still be able to brush and floss normally is that uh, we use the wedge in order to help us make that happen. So again, the wedge is inserted from the lingual, so the doctor won't be able to insert it from the buckle. Again, remember, because that tophomire is going to be sitting on the buckle. So the doctor has to go in from the lingual and then push the wedge into that embrasure space. So the wedges themselves, they come in different sizes. Uh, they can be triangular, they can be a little bit rounded, they can be made out of wood or plastic. Uh, more, more, more and more doctors are moving away from using wooden wedges because as the wedges become moist from the patient's saliva, uh, they can start to uh, break down and um, become brittle. And sometimes if they get too wet when you try to take them out of the embrasure space, they little pieces of the wood will break off and then it'll, it'll feel like the patient has a splinter uh, in their tooth. So we are more and more doctors are moving towards using plastic wedges because it's just better to handle and you and you know it's not going to fall apart. So here's an example of the different types of wedges. So as you can see in this container, they come in different colors. The colors are just representative of the different shapes that they have. I mean, as you can see, like the ones that are sitting on the, on the, on the stand, they come in different sizes. Some of them are thicker, some of them are thinner. Because remember, the spaces between our teeth vary from person to person. I may have some areas of my mouth that have more spaces. Someone else may have areas of their mouth that the spaces are much tighter. So you have to pick the wedge that is going to fit in your patient's mouth. You don't want to pick one that's too big and then you cause um, some displacement or cause them to have a space afterward. You want to make sure that you kind of choose one that aligns with the patient's uh, general spacing. So we can use a 110 Howie pliers. And again, if you don't know what that looks like, go back to that instrument book, that little Rolodex book, um, and you can see what the Howie pliers look like. But if your doctor does not have the Howie pliers, you can also just use your regular cotton pliers in order to push that wedge into the space. But again, you we have to be the doctor's ears and the doctor's eyes and the doctor's brain sometimes, because some doctors move so quick, they forget to remove these things. So in the end, try to remember to remind your doctor, hey doc, the wedge is still in there because you don't want the patient to walk away with the wedge still in between their teeth. And then the patient's going to feel uncomfortable, but they won't know until hours later because they're numb. So we have to always remember, especially since the wedges are pretty small. And even as an expanded function, you can just pick up the cotton pliers and remove it yourself 
um, if the doctor was to get up and forget. So criteria, so here, uh, how we place the matrix band for your posterior teeth, okay? So they have a diagonal slot on the Toffelmeyer, uh, and that diagonal slot, when you are placing the matrix band on the patient's teeth or tooth, the diagonal slot should always be facing towards the gingiva, okay? The retainer itself should be on the buccal surface of the tooth, but the handle should be coming outside of the mouth, okay? So the handle should not be facing towards the patient's like throat. And again, I know it's just words and, and uh, letters on a paper and you hearing my voice, but please go back to those videos and watch how they place the retainer together, how they put it together and how they placed it on the type of dot so you can have a visual of what exactly that's gonna look like, okay? Uh, when you seat the bands, you want to make sure that it kind of flows a little bit below the gingiva. If you look at the gingival third of the tooth with, when the band is on and you can still see the enamel, then your band is not on all the way. Your band should be flushed against the gingiva. When you look at the gingival third with the band on it, you should not see it, okay? It should be a little below the gingiva, completely covering that area of the tooth. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about anterior matrix systems. So different uh, devices that we can use if we have an interproximal cavity for um, an anterior tooth. And uh, I wanna say on Tuesday, I posted a video of an anterior composite. And in that video, about the three minute mark, you'll actually see the doctor place what we call a mylar strip in between the patient's teeth in order to restore that area. So now, it makes more, so much more sense to use a clear mylar strip than it does to use the metal matrix band because we can actually see what we're doing through the mylar strip. Remember, anterior teeth are the most visible teeth we have, right? So when we are restoring it, you wanna see what you're doing every step of the way so you can make sure you're recreating the shape of those anterior teeth. Because the strip is clear, we can take it slow and do it step by step and see if we are um, creating those shapes. So again, the celluloid strip or mylar strip, it can be referred by any of those two names. It's used for a class three or class four restoration. Remember, class three is for anterior teeth, two or more surfaces, but one surface has to be, at least one surface has to be interproximal. And then class four is two or more surfaces, but it includes the incisal edge. So when you are doing restorations for these two types of classifications of caries, it is very helpful for you to have a mylar strip. So if you hear your doctor telling you, we're going to be doing a class three uh, composite. We're going to be doing a class four composite. You should be preparing to have your mylar strip out as well. You don't need a retainer to use the mylar strip, but you do uh, need a wedge because the wedge can help hold it into place. So here is an example of another clear matrix system that you can use. Uh, and this one is a little bit smaller than the mylar strips but you'll be able to place it directly in between, in, in the interproximal area um, to restore your tooth. This version that's shown on this picture is better for smaller, uh, smaller restoration. So if you look at the, the restoration we had in that video, this probably wouldn't be too helpful just because the strips here are a little bit too small. So uh, we have plastic matrix and wedge that uh, help us to restore the interproximal area before etching and bonding. Um, doctors will want to place the mylar before you bond. They don't always place it before you etch, but it definitely before you bond, the doctor needs to place the uh, mylar strip. And the reason being is that you have to remember the bonding agent is very similar to glue. It's an adhesive. So if you place the bonding agent uh, and you don't place the mylar strip, you run the risk of sticking the two teeth together. Like if we're doing tooth number eight, mesial, and tooth number nine, mesial as well, and we place the bond, those two areas, the composite itself could stick together. So you want to make sure you're separating them with that mylar strip before you even start with your bond 
composite and then the rest of your steps. After you place the composite material, you want to pull the matrix out of uh, the area and then the doctor can start using um, they can start using their polishing burrs. So they can use a diamond polishing with the high speed or what we call a white stone with the high speed in order to uh, help reshape the material. So contouring, of course, you're going to shape contour uh, the matrix band as well. It's not as easy to shape the matrix band or contour the matrix band um, because it literally is a strip of plastic but sometimes you can take your cotton plies just to give it a little bit of shape. So then we have some alternate uh, alternative matrix systems. Now these are, are these tend to be the ones that are a little bit more expensive. So not all offices will have them. But I will say that if you end up working with a new age dentist, so a dentist who graduated in the last ten years, I would say, or the last fifteen years, they're probably not going to use a Tafelmeyer. Um, because they're always looking for the easiest way to um, the easiest way to complete a procedure, uh, and then also, unfortunately, a lot of assistants don't take the time to learn the Tafelmeyer. So then the doctors just go ahead and um, you know try to find something a little bit easier depending on uh, depending on their assistant. So you may find one of these auto matrix systems in your um, office. So in this case, they have these uh, matrix bands that come out of like this machine. And the only thing that you really have to do is have an approximate length oh, I wouldn't say length, but approximate circumference of your tooth. So you need to know like how much material do you need in order to wrap it around the entire tooth. Um, and, then, and then you would place it around uh, the tooth like a regular matrix band, except for it wouldn't need a Toffelmeyer. Um, it usually comes with a wrench and that wrench would be used to tighten it around the tooth. Uh, it, it, it's a little bit different. You have to be very careful with these auto matrix systems um, because they tend to be very sharp. The material itself is a lot sharper than the universal matrix bands that we use. Um, and you cannot just unwind it to take it off. You have to cut it out. So you have to be very careful when you're cutting it that you don't um, accidentally cut the patient's gums uh, while you're trying to cut the band off. So it's it's easy in the way that you don't need to put a Toffelmeyer together. All you need to do is, you know, measure out how much material you need, place it over the tooth and tighten it. Uh, but because the material is a lot thicker and you have to cut it out, it's a little bit more delicate. You have to be more careful so you don't hurt the patient in the process. Okay, so here's an example of what some of those auto matrix look like. So you see they have different um, sizes. They have wide, medium, they have a narrow version. And then on the opposite end here is where we have the screw, the like a wrench that you can use to tighten it around. But the wrench does not stay in the patient's mouth. Once you tighten it, the wrench can go onto the side and then that band just sits on the patient's tooth. We also have sectional matrices. So these are just smaller strips of that matrix band material. And it's very thin, they're a little bit more curved. And once you, all you have to do is place them into the interproximal area. Um, you don't need a matrix band. You don't really need much besides like a, um, I would say like a, um, a cotton plier uh, and it's, it's a lot smaller, it's a lot easier to use, but it is like a choking hazard. So I personally know that a lot of doctors wouldn't recommend using it on kids because the pieces are so small. Um, but again, it is an easier option, so you don't have to put the Toffelmeyer together. You kind of just slide the little strip of matrix in between wherever that interproximal cavity or interproximal decay is located, and then it helps to create a border for you. So this is kind of what it looks like. So you see in the interproximal of the tooth, you have the little silver sectional matrix. Sometimes this large um, extender that you have on here, most doctors take this off and just leave the sectional because this large garrison, um, 
like this extender, it usually gets in their way, especially if you have a patient whose mouth cannot open very wide, or um, if you have a patient who uh, is not really staying still, or if, you're, if you don't have much like you, lighting, like you can't really see because the cavity is so far back. So some doctors will place that uh, silver sectional without this extender. Um, it just kind of depends on how much the doctor can see. Okay, so for primary teeth, the matrix system is also very simple. Some doctors can use the universal retainer, which is the Toffemeyer with a matrix band that's smaller for primary teeth. Um, but for, for the most part, we use what we call T-bands and spot welded bands for primary teeth. And I'm going to go on and um, upload some videos on, what it, on how you put the T-band together and what that looks like. Um, because the T-band themselves, as the assistant, you have to assemble it, and then the doctor will be able to place it and then adjust the size as they need to. So this is the example of what the copper T-band looks like. So it comes in a long strip with two little flaps and you kind of have to um, you have to make it into a circle and then fold the flaps over and then it becomes like a pulley so once you put it over the tooth the doctor is able to pull the piece of the strap that's sticking out in order to tighten it and loosen it and then of course it just gets tossed at the end um, after each patient so a copper the t-band is a copper band um, it just looks like a, a long t uh, as the assistant, like I said, you just have to bend the wings, form a, a circle, and then you kind of fold the wings over that, uh, the little tail that's extended. And then once the doctor fits it over, they just pull the band in and out to tighten it and loosen it. And then of course they can just remove it at the end and toss it. So the spot welded band is a form fitted around a prepared tooth. Again, you would have to use the 110 pliers. If your doctor does not have 110 pliers, then you can use um, just your cotton pliers. And it's, and I'm gonna, they don't have a picture of it on this PowerPoint, so I'm going to um, just pull up a, a video. If I can't find a video on YouTube, I'll just post a picture, um, just so you guys can see what the spot welded bands look like. And again, these are the T-band, the copper T-band, and the spot welded band are preferred for primary teeth. These are not bands that you would be able to use on uh, an on a um, on a permanent tooth. It should only be used on primary teeth because they're too small to fit over your permanent teeth. If you try to put a T-band on a permanent tooth, it would not extend all the way up to the um, occlusal. So there would be a lot of tooth structure that's, that doesn't have um, a border in order to, to create the, uh, the filling material against it or to give you like a border for that material. So again, T-band and the spot welded band are for anterior teeth. The universal retainer, which is your Toffemeyer and um, your sectional matrices and those, uh, those um, the adjusted matrices, those, those can be used for your permanent teeth, but you would not use these. You have to keep these ones for your primary. So the spot welded bands themselves, they measure three fourths to a, a one inch of stainless steel matrix material. So it's very similar to the band that you have. Um, so you just fit it around the prepared tooth, you adapt it, meaning you just adjust it. You, um, tight, you can also use it to kind of tighten it a little bit. Um, so when you hold the ends, you can remove the band. Uh, again, it's one of those things you kind of just pop it in and pop it out. And I'll just try to see if I can find a bit of video so you can have a better visual of what that looks like. 